And Justice, good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for being with us. In your statement that you've issued, you referred to abuses at one of the most notorious uh, prisons in Zimbabwe, the Chikurubi Maximum uh, Facility. What do you understand to be going on there? What we understand to be going on there is that people, normal, lawful citizens of Zimbabwe who were protesting, journalists who were reporting on it, lawyers who were defending people who had been arrested, detained and beaten up, are all being held in detention in Chikurubi. Our one report was that at least uh, young uh, Chibono was in leg irons. This is a perfectly legal, lawful, proper young man who has committed no crime, certainly none of violence. He's being kept in irons. We have also been told that they're not being allowed to get food from outside. They are to, obliged to make do with terrible stuff that is given to them in the prison. And Justice, how do you go about verifying just the extent of the alleged rights abuses in places such as maximum facility prisons in Zimbabwe when the government is saying at the moment that there is no crisis in Zimbabwe and organizations such as yours, for example, are unable to gain independent access to those facilities? We do happen to have a board member of Freedom Under Law is in Zimbabwe, is a leading human rights lawyer in Zimbabwe. Uh, Petrus Mtetwa is a, is a world famous human rights lawyer. Thus far, the government of the Mangagwa government hasn't dared arrest her, and I don't think they will. So we're not blind. Uh, incidentally, it's very interesting that when our government sent two very senior emissaries to go and talk, they were allowed to talk only to the government, and when they wanted to speak to the opposition, they were told, Samaya, go home. You can't talk to them. Uh, we are treated not as a respected neighbor. We are not treated as the country upon whom the Zimbabwe government actually depends for its survival. Without us and the other surrounding states, the Zimbabwe regime would collapse. And we, through our government, should be bringing lawful pressure to bear on the Zimbabwe authorities to behave as they ought to behave towards their own people. And how it should that pressure routine. be applied, uh, Justice? Forgive me. How should that pressure be applied? That is not for us to say. We do know that there are diplomatic channels, there are lines of communication at the highest level between our government and the Zimbabwean government. There are lines of communication through the African Union. We happen to have the presidency at the moment. It is not for a human rights organization like us to prescribe to government. But what we can do is we can say, please, we know about it. We draw your attention to it. It is a disgrace that the South Africa is not looking after its responsibilities within the region. Justice Kuchler, how would the government, I wonder, navigate the line between intervention and interference, especially when you've got someone as high up as President Mnangagwa himself saying what's happening in Zimbabwe is interference by foreign agents and rogue Zimbabweans. So how do the countries, the neighboring countries, go about intervening and bringing pressure to bear on that government without falling perhaps into the narrative or the trap of being accused of being interfering governments? You're perfectly correct. There is a distinction between interfering and intervention. Very often, the distinction is only in the perspective. I think I'm intervening. You think I'm interfering. You are beating up your wife. I intervene to save her. You say I'm interfering. I say I'm intervening. In this particular instance, there are channels of communication that exist. We have the SADC structure in Southern Africa. We have the African Union structure in our continent. Both, at both levels, 
there are means of communication through lawful existing governmental channels to say to one another, we are unhappy at what you're doing. We are, our people are unhappy. We do not think you're doing the right thing. That's not interfering. But the moment somebody is beating up somebody else and you wish to protect the victim, you cannot step, step back just because you're afraid that you will be accused of interfering. It is not a domestic affair if the human rights of people are being denied by a government within SADC. Justice Jan Krichler from Freedom and the Law, thank you for your time this afternoon.